Armando Hasurigan, Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group. For the latest videos, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurigan, please like, and here you can also ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, including artworks, or you can send them to me. And you can also change the quality settings of this video to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to look at an overall picture of the respiratory system. So we're talking about the lungs. The respiratory system is very important because this is essentially what gives us oxygen so that we can live. And during this process, we also release carbon dioxide. So we inhale oxygen, release carbon dioxide, and it's essential for life. Now, to learn about the respiratory system, we actually have to learn about the circulatory system, about the heart, and how it pumps blood throughout our body. And it's important to know about the circulatory system because the respiratory system and the circulatory system coincide together. They work together. So funny enough, we begin learning about the respiratory system by learning about the heart. Here is the heart. The heart consists of four chambers, chamber chambers. Blood vessels enter and leave the heart. The blood vessel in blue here represents deoxygenated blood, which means that it contains low amounts of oxygen. Typically, it contains a much higher levels of carbon dioxide. This blood vessel in red represents oxygenated blood, which means that it contains oxygen. Now, this oxygenated blood supply gets the oxygen from the lungs. And this picture here, I represent as the lungs. Now, outside in the air, in our atmosphere, we have many types of gases, including oxygen gas, O2. Now, we breathe in oxygen gas. It comes into our lungs. And as we breathe in oxygen gas, we also breathe out carbon dioxide from the, our deoxygenated blood supply. So carbon dioxide leaves into the atmosphere and we breathe in oxygen gas. So now as oxygen enters our blood supply, it reoxidizes our blood supply. So now we have ox an oxygenated blood supply here in red. Oxygen will then travel through our body, enter our heart. The heart will then pump out the oxygen and transport it throughout uh, to different organs, to different tissues. The different tissues will take in oxygen and use it to make energy in the forms of ATP. And as a byproduct, it will create carbon dioxide. So the tissues will then release carbon dioxide. The blood vessel then transports the carbon dioxide back to the heart. So then the heart can pump it up to the lungs to be exchanged for oxygen. Now this overall picture is very important to understand. Um, on the side note, you might ask, what happens to the carbon dioxide then? Well, the plants actually use carbon dioxide and through photosynthesis uses, uh, together with water and sunlight, um, it makes carb carbohydrates and also oxygen as a byproduct. And so it's sort of like a cycle. We breathe out carbon dioxide, the plants use carbon dioxide to make oxygen, and then we use the oxygen and make carbon dioxide as a byproduct. And so we can appreciate how this cycle works. Now, the respiratory system, or respiration, can be divided into four major parts. One is known as the pulmonary ventilation. And this is the movement of air in and out of the lungs. So the movement of oxygen into the lungs and the movement of carbon dioxide out of the lungs, for example. Two is known as external respiration. External respiration is the movement of oxygen from the lungs into the blood and the movement of carbon dioxide from the blood into the lungs. Number three is the transport of respiratory gases. So how the oxygen basically gets transported to different tissues and different organs. And then that's, we come to our last one, four. And this is known as internal respiration. Internal respiration is where, the, is where we have the movement of oxygen from the blood to the tissues and the movement of carbon dioxide from the tissues into the blood. So I hope you can understand the difference between internal and external respiration, most importantly. Now that we hopefully understood a bit of an overall picture of the respiratory system and how it interacts with the circulatory system, let's look at the anatomy. Let's look at the lungs in particular and the respiratory tract. Okay, 
So here we have the atmosphere again. It contains many types of gases, including oxygen gas, O2. Here we have a human body. Um, I'm just going to shade some areas here to, to, so you can see the uh, different parts of the respiratory tract more easily. So let's start learning about the anatomy. Here we have our nasal cavity, the nose cavity, the oral cavity, the mouth cavity, the pharynx. And then we have the esophagus here at the back, which leads towards the stomach. This is part of the digestive system. And then in front of it, we have the larynx, which actually leads to the respiratory tract, this respiratory, uh, further to the respiratory tract, the lungs. And so what divides the, esoph uh, the esophagus and the larynx? Well, it's the epiglottis. The epiglottis can cover the larynx when we are eating. So just to understand what is happening, we're breathing in oxygen gas into our nasal cavity or through our oral cavity. And it goes down towards our larynx. And we breathe our out carbon dioxide. When we breathe in oxygen gas, it will proceed down here and travel to the larynx. And then it will go through a cartilage area known as a trachea. The trachea will then divide into many types of branches. Uh, the point of division is known as a carina of the trachea. And these many divisions are what make up the lungs essentially. So here we have the right lung and here we have the left lung. And below the lungs we have the diaphragm. This is the muscle which helps um, in our breathing process. So let's take a closer look at the lungs and let's look closer at the anatomy of the lungs. So here we have the lungs. Um, we breathe in oxygen gas and it comes into the lungs. We also breathe out carbon dioxide and it leaves the lungs. So here we have the trachea, the cartilage area full of cartilage, cartilage rings. Now the trachea will divide into what's called the primary bronchus. There's two. And then the primary bronchus will then further divide into the secondary bronchi. There are many of them. And then the secondary bronchi will then divide further into the segmental bronchi. And it still keeps dividing smaller and smaller. Now, let's stop there for a second and look at this area here on the left lung. As you can see, uh, the left lung has a bit of space here. The space is known as a cardiac notch. And if you know what cardiac means, it means it has to relate to the heart. And so this is actually where the heart is uh, positioned in our body. Another thing to note is that the left lung and the right lung consist of different number of lobes making up the lungs, such as the right lung consists of a right superior lobe, a middle lobe, and a, um, a inferior lobe. So the right lung has three lobes, whereas the left lung only has two. It has a superior lobe and it has an inferior lobe. So that's the other difference. And now also going back to the trachea, which then branches off to the primary bronchus, then the secondary bronchus, then the segmental bronchus, bronchi, sorry. What comes after this? Well, the, the last point um, of division, we have this sort of sac looking thing. And this is known as um, alveolus, the alveolar ducts. So let's just zoom into this alveolar, alveolar duct looking thing and look at it in a bit more detail. Of course, to each of, the, of these alveoli sacs, we have uh, blood vessels coming in and out. The blue coming in and the red going out. Now let's learn some a bit of anatomy. Here we have what's called the bronchiole. And, and wrapping around the bronchioles, we have smooth muscles which are necessary in order for these to contract. Then the bronchioles will go further to where they end, known as a terminal bronchiole. Then this terminal bronchiole will essentially go into what's called the sac, consisting of, consisting of many alveoluses. So I hope this makes sense. Um, an important terminology is that one of these balls, these ball-looking things, are known as an alveolus. Many of these balls, looking things, are known as an alveoli. So one alveolus, many alveoli. And they make up the alveolar sac or duct. Hope this makes sense. So here we have the alveolar sac, which contains many alveoli. 
And then we have the alveolar duct, which basically is the area which connects to the terminal bronchial, you can say. Okay, this part, this part might sound very confusing, but bear with me. Now the question is, the pulmonary artery leaves the heart with deoxygenated blood, and it contains mainly carbon dioxide, if you remember. The pulmonary artery will enter the lungs and will uh, basically uh, branch into the alveolar sacs. The pulmonary artery will give CO2 to, to the alveoluses, the alveoli, and the alveoli will give the pulmonary artery o oxygen. And so now it is reoxygenated. It contains new oxygen. And then as the, as the blood vessel leaves the alveolar sac and goes back towards the heart, it is now known as the pulmonary vein because vein always goes back to the heart. And we'll get back to that again if you don't quite understand it. But another two concepts you should understand is that the pathway from nose to the bronchioles, which is there, is called the conducting zone of respiration. From the bronchioles to the alveoluses, the, the one, one meaning alveoluses, is known as the respiratory zone. And this is where the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide happens. So let's go back to this pulmonary artery, pulmonary vein, and look at it again. So remember, one, one of these balls is an alveolus. We have an alveolus. Now we have the pulmonary artery coming from the heart with deoxygenated blood, with carbon dioxide, and it branches into small pulmonary arterioles and then capillaries, where it will give carbon dioxide to the alveolus. The alveolus will give the blood vessel or the capillaries new oxygen, so it will re-oxygenate the blood supply. This new oxygen will then leave the alveolus as a pulmonary vein, because the pulmonary vein will go back towards the heart. And this pulmonary vein contains new oxygen, so it's oxygenated. Now that's a very important concept to understand. Let's go back and look at the alveolar sacs, the many alveoluses, and look at what components it has by looking at a cross-sectional diagram of it. So here we have a cross-section of um, alveoli. One, of course, being an alveolus. We also have blood vessels surrounding this area, con consisting of red blood cells. And red blood cells play an important role, which we will soon see. From the blood vessel to one, the, one alveolus is about 0.5 micrometers, which is very small. Also around this area, we have white blood cells. And within the alveoluses, we have macrophages. So why do we have macrophages and white, white blood cells within our lungs? Well, it is important to have white blood cells, such as macrophages, within our lungs. It's, and this is because our lungs is continuously exposed to um, the outside. So pathogens, uh, bacteria, small, so small things, dust, particles can enter our lungs and can potentially damage it. And this is where the white blood cells uh, play a role in that it basically stops this from uh, stops, stops these invading things from damaging our, our body. The alveolus itself consists of two main types of cells. The type 1 alveolus cell, which is basically a simple squamous epithelial cell. It is thin, which allows for easy exchange of gas, easy exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide. The second type of cell is known as the type 2 alveolus cell, or the surfactant cell. Surfactant cells secrete surfactant, and they reduce surface tension in the alveolus, which means that the membranes can separate more easily, allowing for easier gas exchange. Now let's look at the interaction between an alveolus and a blood vessel, or the capillary. Let's zoom into this section here and see how gas exchange occurs, an overall picture. So here we have the type 1 alveolus cell of the alveolus, and then here we have the epithelial cell of the capillary. Now this is where red blood cells play a critical role because respiratory gases such as oxygen travel throughout the body by binding onto hemoglobin within a red blood cell. Carbon dioxide also requires red blood cells in order to travel around the body, but carbon dioxides only require rare red blood cells so that the red blood cells can convert carbon dioxide into what's called bicarbonate, and carbon dioxide therefore travel throughout the body through by 
uh, through a chemical known as bicarbonate. So when the red blood cells reach the alveolus, uh, the red blood cells will con convert the bicarbonate back to carbon dioxide and give it to the alveolus. The alveolus will then give oxygen gas to the red blood cell. The oxygen gas will bind onto the hemoglobin component of the red blood cell and then will travel around the blood. The carbon dioxide will also obviously be exhaled out. So that's where we'll end in this overall uh, video on the respiratory system. We'll look into um, the red blood cell and how, it, and how oxygen and carbon dioxide does all these things with it in the next video, hopefully, which will come out soon. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and comment, and leave some feedback, please. Thank you.